Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another TBR video and as you all know if you follow me TBR for the purpose of this particular video means to be released. So it's the last day of September and it's time to look ahead to October and as always I look at the new releases in the upcoming month and then I pick a couple that I personally find interesting and then I share them with you. And as always we start our TBR, I mean my TBR but maybe also your TBR to be released excitements Anyway, we start the TBR video with general fiction. And for this category, I picked a book that was actually quite a bit of a cheat because it was published on uh, yesterday, September 29th. Um, and I did already a September TBR, but you know, anyway, the book is Marilyn Robinson Jack, um, the last book in the quartet, the Gilead Quartet. Um, um, if you follow me, you know that I read all three previous books in the Gilead series, uh, Gilead, Home and Lila. Um, and I really, really loved L Lila, was my favorite in the three. Um, but I want to, I want to finish. Uh, I mean, I'm bad with series and here I go. <laughs> wanting to finish a series. But anyway, the Gilead series is about two families mainly. Um, um, both men of the family are uh, priests, pastors. Uh, you have John Ames, who is the main character in the first book, Gilead, um, at the end of his life in his 70s, but he has a young son and he sort of writes a letter to his son. Then Home, the second one, is focusing on the family of John Ames's best friend, uh, 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 John Broughton, and especially his daughter, Glory. Um, and then Lila uh, is from the perspective of uh, John Ames's young, much younger wife, Lila. And the last book, Jack, is about a character who plays an important role in all three previous books. Um, and that's the sort of not quite morally sound son um, of John Broughton, Jack. Uh, we know already a little bit about him uh, from the previous books that he, you know, he returned after having um, a marriage that didn't quite work out. And he is, like I said, um, maybe not the most morally sound person, but he's certainly one of the most interesting characters in the Gilead series, at least I feel. And this one, Jack, will be from his perspective and we will learn the backstory of his failed marriage. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to the last book in this series. And I I just hope that I will love it as much as I loved Lila. The next category, as always, is nonfiction. And for this one, I picked a book by Ariana Davis, uh, What Would Frida Do? A Guide to Living Boldly, which will be published on the 20th of October. Ariana Davis is an American journalist. She works for Opera Magazine, but she also published nonfiction pieces in other magazines and newspapers. And this is her first book. And Frida is, of course, as you can see from the picture, Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo, the Mexican writer, uh, uh, Mexican writer, <laughs> Mexican artist, painter, who lived in the first half of the 20th century. And if you're following my channel, you know how much I admire her work. Uh, she was bold and she was brave and she definitely had to overcome obstacles, um, in particular um, her physical obstacles because she had a near fatal uh, accident when she was a young girl in her teens um, and she had multiple operations and had to wear a, a, a sort of a, a corset. Uh, not an easy life. Um, and if I understood the blurb of the book correctly, Ariana Davis explores um, in each chapter a particular aspect of Frida Kahlo's life and a particular obstacle that uh, Frida Kahlo had to overcome, also from a feminist point of view, uh, because as a female painter in at the beginning, um, towards the mid of 20th, the 20th century, uh, Frida Kahlo was always in the shadow of the male painters, of course. Her husband was also a painter. You know how that goes. 
didn't change much, now did it? So that sounded really fascinating. And given the fact that I'm admirer, I'm, I am an admirer, trying to make a whole sentence here, I am an admirer of Frida Kahlo, um, I had to pick this book for the category nonfiction. Next, we move on to translated fiction. And for this category, I picked a Japanese book, Hiroko Oyamada, The Whole, translated from the Japanese by David Boyd. And the English translation will be published on the 6th of October. And the Japanese original came out a couple of years ago in 2014. Um, I have never read uh, Hiroko Oyamada's work, um, even though she is a celebrated Japanese author. Shame on me, as always. And this um, new book of hers is a novella. It's only 122 pages, so I would call it a novella and not a novel, but who cares? Um, and we follow Aza, Aza um, who moves with her husband, because her husband has a new job, uh, to the countryside, close to uh, Aza's husband's family. And we get um, the usual, you know, mother-in-law, um, the in-laws meddling. Aza feels uh, isolated because she doesn't work and her husband is away all the time because of his new job. And she explores her surroundings and one day she follows some strange creature um, and falls into a hole. I don't know whether it's a rabbit hole, sounds a bit like Alice in Wonderland, and this is the first of quite strange and mysterious um, events um, that we follow Asa exploring and experiencing. It sounded a bit weird in the way, weird in the way that I might like, um, and I have been meaning you know, to uh, read something by this author for quite some time. And uh, because it's a new release, I thought this is a perfect um, uh, opportunity to finally get to read something <laughs> by this author. So this book, The Whole, made it into the TBR for October in the category Translated Fiction. Next up is crime fiction. Um, and for this category, I picked the new book by Tana French, The Searcher, which will also come out on the 6th of October. Uh, Tana French is probably known to you if you read crime, mystery, thrillers. She's an Irish author um, and she's probably most famous for her uh, Dublin Murder Squad series. I read a couple of books in that series and I really like them, but I also sometimes like to read a standalone mystery. You know, I'm, the, the series are good because you follow um, a main character, mostly a detective, and you get the development in his or her life, and that, that's good. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I'm in the mood for a standalone, and this one, The Searcher, is a standalone. And by the way, another green color, uh, on the cover, very green, like the previous book, the whole green is the new black. I don't know. I don't love uh, light green colors, but what can you do? Anyway, this standalone novel follows a retired detective, Cal Hooper, who moves to a remote Irish village. He bought a cottage there and he plans on, you know, be the retired uh, person, fix up the cottage, uh, go on walks, maybe buy a dog or something. But of course, it doesn't work out like that. Uh, a boy in the village uh, approaches um, Carl, Carl um, and telling him that his brother is missing, but nobody seems to be looking for him. And of course, Cal Hooper goes to investigate. That's all I know. And as you might know, when I talk about uh, uh, crime fiction that I haven't read yet, I don't want to know more than just the premise, because I feel if you go deeper into the story, it's a spoiler. But it sounded interesting, and knowing uh, Tana French, she can certainly write a good, fast-paced thriller. So The Searcher made it uh, into the TBR for October. And last but not least, as always, we end um, the TBR with sci-fi slash fantasy. And this one is more of a fantasy uh, book. It's the first book in a new series called Black Sun, uh, written by Rebecca Roanhorse. 
um, and it will be published on the 13th of October. Yes, um, Rebecca Roanhorse is an, um, a black Navajo American writer uh, writing fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, she was born in 1971 and she's also a lawyer. She lived with the Navajo Nation for quite some time and clerked at their Supreme Court. So fellow lawyer. I read a couple of her previous books and really liked them. Um, um, uh, Ron Hose often features Navajo characters. Um, so it, it's a different, uh, you know, a, a different angle which I really enjoy. And this one, like I said, Black Sun is the first one in a new fantasy series set in um, um, the not then United States because it's before Columbus. Um, uh, the original people who lived there uh, set during that time and in, with, that, with those people. Um, and it follows the events around the winter solstice, uh, the celebration that is supposed to happen, but the winter solstice in that year also uh, coincides uh, with uh, a solar eclipse, hence black sun. And then you get, I suppose, the the range of characters that Ron Horse always has in her, in her books. But I thought the setting really sounded very interesting to me, fascinating to read something uh, that is based on, you know, ancient history, if you will, um, and uh, the, the whole idea of the, the solar eclipse, um, that this has some impact on the story. Yeah, I don't know, but it, it, it sounded really fascinating. And you know that I often struggle with fantasy. I uh, It's not a genre um, that... I find easy access to. I tried a, quite a bit uh, of fantasy that didn't really uh, gel with me. I mean, I love N.K. Jemisin, you know, and Robin Hobb to, to a certain extent, but um, I'm not one for the, you know, knights in shining armor kind of fantasy. That's just not my thing. Uh, but I thought this one sounded interesting enough to me that I want to try it out and maybe you want to try it out as well. Anyway, so these are my five picks, if I counted correctly, for the October TBR books to be released in October and Jack in end of September. But who cares? <laughs> so I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know whether any of my uh, new books interest you or whether you have a particular book that you are excited for that will be published in October. Looking forward to your comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.